Hi folks, welcome, Flying Doctor here. Really good to have you for this tutorial on how to land an H145. We'll just get things started right now. I'm situated at Barton Airfield, which is near Manchester, and I thought to illustrate a an approach and a landing, it would be helpful to, well, land at, um, land at Old Trafford Stadium, really, uh, where Manchester United play. Uh, but it will give me an opportunity to just walk through the combination of approach speeds that work for me and i am by no means an expert but also the cyclic and collective beat trim inputs that can make all the difference by and large in my le learning i work with gtc and hover mode as well in order to get me exactly where i want to be i'll show you some tips and trips don't forget the h145 is being updated and one of the great updates will be a rear camera mounted underneath the tail of the aircraft and that will give us better visibility as to what's happening underneath the helicopter when we land that's one of the things once it, once you get down to actually being able to to hover and to, to move with a bit more confidence is actually seeing underneath the, the helicopter that's proved is diff, proves difficult so here we are, I'm just going to raise myself and you know the score, keep doing it all the time. I'm going to raise the collective and as soon as I do so, I am going to click on the hover mode ASAP. So there we go, let's click on hover mode. Straight up we've gone, given ourselves probably a bit of surprise there, a bit of air sickness. I'm not looking to be that high. Um, I'm going to take this to 500 feet because I need to see around me. In fact, we may well, even from this distance, be able to see. Right, so this that's about 600 feet. So there we are. We'll just lower ourselves there. And uh, one thing, if you use the, the terrain indicator here, as you can see that as we're lowering down, I can see that on our flight path we're all green, which is all good. So we should find that the stadium is just approaching us stating this courtesy of flightsim.to i'll put in the description uh, which wonderful person has produced that for us again it's just a delicate balance really don't like the speed dropping down too much it's a bit too low there we are there's the stadium Just dip ourselves down. So you're seeing Manchester United, beautiful image there. This is all, all of these inputs are via, so I'm concentrating, that's what I'm speaking. Uh, I'm not using any um, autopilot or cyclic beak at the moment it's just giving us an idea so we just go around just gives an idea of where we are so that's where we want to land okay now I would generally say that what I'd be looking for if I were approaching and I were using uh, the autopilot is uh, you can certainly find a road that major road obviously you know a good place to start so I just tend to think about where my approach is going to be. And the big thing that I'm very often looking for is to try and get some lose some of the speed and crucially go into um, hover mode. If I do that here, you can see that crucially what I'm doing is just trying realizing that that, that the helicopter's going to slow you need to you need to do this with practice and because there's a certain momentum depending on your speed so I'm you I've used hover mode just to hover right above uh, the stadium you can see now this is the difficult one of the difficulties is one of the difficulties uh, is that is actually seeing underneath the helicopter for you land in that perspective of as you lower yourself where you are in space and um, because it's I find it really difficult to actually for example find that H in a helipad um, but we'll just see what we can do here 
And what we're going to do is I'm just going to zoom in here. I'm going to turn off in this central map here. I'm going to, I've got my navigation here. Uh, but it's central map. I'm going to turn off the, uh, the terrain warning. Okay. And I'm going to dial in nice and close. And what that does is it, gives a, it will hopefully give me a position, a much clearer position of where I am. But by all accounts on that diagram, I'm pretty close. OK, so we're on hover mode and we can use the beep trim here. I'm actually going to use my mouse to demonstrate. And my advice is if you can do these, get these mapped onto your keys as soon as you can. OK, so we can just hover left at the moment. If we click H. So GTCH, I had it sort of put to me that GTCH is used um, to hover, for example, over a casualty, uh, an evacuation, or if you're fighting a fire. But to be honest, I find this works for me. It's more precise. And GTC is a taxi mode, really. Um, but it takes some time to get used to GTC because GTC has a, has, it does certainly have more momentum with it. I'm just going to touch the yaw here and you can see we're just above the stadium and this is relatively simple if you take your time, relatively simple. But you can see how difficult it is for me to see what's going on below. So I'm just going to click here and as you can see if I can manoeuvre and get as much of an overhead view as possible that's great. And uh, so uh, again I can do this in the external mode, perhaps it's cheating uh, but I'm not convinced I'm getting a good view anyway. That's one of the weaknesses, whether that this is an accurate view or it's just that you're doing it in two dimensions, uh, whether that's actually impacting the ability that I've got to get a grip of my my space as I the space that I'm in as I look to land the aircraft is is something else. I can't actually get a direct overhead view. There is a there is a quick view for that. There is an external view that you can use if you're really looking for some accuracy and that might be helpful. So I'm going to go to the external view right above. And I, although I'm not terribly happy with that, I could have somebody else assisting, presumably in the helicopter. So I'm just inching forward here. And I'm just going to yaw to the left slightly. OK. And I'm going to move forward just a little bit more. So that's one way in which we can line up, and you may well find that particularly um, helpful. So yeah, there we go. If we start to lower ourselves, and again, I can just view kind of alongside, but we start to lower ourselves. Give yourself an idea just as you're lowering yourself, just, just give yourself some time. OK. And I'm using the uh, beep trim here. This should be really inspiring as we come down. Gorgeous trim. I wonder whether we're seeing here a change in the it's the weather. Yeah, the weather is just pushing and the weather is just coming. There's a little weather vane there, but we're lowering down. You can just take your time with this. Lovely view. Just hold that there. Let's lower ourselves a bit more. And I'm interested in trying to get as near to this centre as possible. Again, you can see in front of you, you can see just into the footwell, and I've still not quite worked that out. OK, now what I'd like to do is land with the skids just on this line here. I don't know how accurately I can do that. But I'm just going to inch forward, remembering that every time you're going to click on the beat trim, the cyclic beat trim, you're gonna you're gonna lose, you're gonna have some momentum to be thinking about as well. So overhead picture just shows how far behind we are compared to what it looks like, if I'm honest, in the helicopter itself. We put the, the white line underneath us. 
you can see how easily we've gone forward there I may well have accidentally tucked that again we don't really want to be going much further forward than that let's have a look above us and see exactly where we are we're also tracking behind let's just lower things down Now we reach a point where we're generating a little bit more uplift because you end up being on a, like a cushion of air and then you'll see a difference in the in how the helicopter responds. So I'm just going to hold things there for the moment. And I think there's room to go backwards a little bit more. So a quick touch. Okay, let's just see where we're going. Sometimes it's helpful to see. Well, you can see it either way anyway. There we go. Just holding it there on the hover. We could conceivably come back a little bit. And remember... Ideally, you want to set the aircraft down when it has stopped moving laterally. So there we go. Okay, and we've sunk into the ground a bit there. So that's how I choose to do it. Um, the If we, we're going to uh, lift off, um, the reverse obviously is true. We're going to lift up and we're going to hit the... Um, hover early on just as we would do uh, usually there we go hover and GTC is really designed for taxiing hover does give us much more pre precision but I can illustrate that it's just as we come out So I'm now going to go into GTC mode. Usually you have to tap this a couple of times. GTC mode. Okay, and really what you're seeing here is the inputs um, are longer lasting. So if I, I can just push the nose forward. And one thing you'll see when you do this is that you'll see a little arrow come up. And that's just indicating the increase in forward momentum that you are likely to get and again it's just a sort of it's a extension really of hover mode but I find uh, you know, so there's our left your and our right your, your it has it has more momentum I'm still getting to grips with this I don't think it's quite right in the sim um, but we'll get there in the end so anyway I just hope you found that helpful thanks a lot take care just a few simple guides then, really, and uh, some of them you'll have picked up from just the takeoff. It's it's the reverse, uh, but particularly the using the external camera. And I'm not particularly satisfied with that, but using the external camera is quite important and helpful. Uh, but also, what I didn't mention is that it's possible uh, to use um, the overhead map uh, to give you a really good idea about where you want to be if you want to centre yourself. Uh, for example. Uh, I'm just trying to think of somewhere else I might want to land. So according to this, according to this map, we are right below us should be virtually. And remember that we are struggling to see. This is the patch here, I think. Let's just go back into the cockpit and see. Okay, I'm going to go for this patch over here and we'll just sort of check. So, uh, so 
So I'm traversing across. There I am. And a tiny bit further. Okay, that's your to the left. In theory, the area, not quite now, but if I go and manage to go straight ahead, I'm going into across what looks like a path into a patch of land. I'm looking at I'm looking almost exclusively at this map here. I'm just watching my attitude as well. So I'm not quite in the belt yet of where we want to be. There we are on the map. We're not far off. We're practically there now. It's a little bit further forward. And I also want to shimmy across to the right. Now according to the map, if you're able to see this here, we should be pretty much there in a landing spot. It's tight behind me, so I'm going to come forward. And I'm just going to put things down there. So a good example of how you can use the map to find a really neat landing spot. And there it is. So if you can see that, there we go. There I am neatly in there. And if we look out, we should find that I'm neatly surrounded by the buildings. Let's have a look above us here. So yes, there we are. But with some precision. Okay, so I just hope you found that helpful. Take care. Stay safe, folk.